New Zealand New Zealand is a sovereign island country in the southwestern Pacific Ocean. The country has two main landmasses the North Island and the South Island and around 600 smaller islands. It has a total land area of 268,000 square kilometers, 103,500 square miles. New Zealand is about 2,000 kilometers, 1,200 miles east of Australia across the Tasman Sea and 1,000 kilometers, 600 miles south of the Pacific Island areas of New Caledonia, Fiji, and Tonga. Because of its remoteness, it was one of the last lands to be settled by humans. During its long period of isolation, New Zealand developed a distinct biodiversity of animal, fungal, and plant life. The country's varied topography and its sharp mountain peaks, such as the Southern Alps, owe much to the tectonic uplift of land and volcanic eruptions. New Zealand's capital city is Wellington, and its most populous city is Auckland. Sometime between 1250 and 1300, Polynesians settled in the islands and developed a distinctive Maori culture. In 1642, Dutch explorer Abel Tasman became the first European to sight New Zealand. In 1840, representatives of the United Kingdom and Maori chiefs signed the Treaty of Waitangi, which declared British sovereignty over the islands. In 1841, New Zealand became a colony within the British Empire and in 1907 it became a dominion, it gained full statutory independence in 1947 and the British monarch remained the head of state. Today, the majority of New Zealand's population of 4.9 million is of European descent, the indigenous Maori are the largest minority, followed by Asians and Pacific Islanders. Reflecting this, New Zealand's culture is mainly derived from Maori and early British settlers, with recent broadening arising from increased immigration. The official languages are English, Maori, and New Zealand Sign Language, with English being very dominant. A developed country, New Zealand ranks highly in international comparisons of national performance, such as quality of life, health, education, protection of civil liberties, and economic freedom. New Zealand underwent major economic changes during the 1980s, which transformed it from a protectionist to a liberalized free trade economy. The service sector dominates the national economy, followed by the industrial sector, and agriculture, international tourism is a significant source of revenue. Nationally, legislative authority is vested in an elected, unicameral parliament, while executive political power is exercised by the cabinet, led by the Prime Minister, currently Jacinda Ardern. Queen Elizabeth II is the country's monarch and is represented by a governor-general, currently Dame Patsy Reddy. In addition, New Zealand is organized into 11 regional councils and 67 territorial authorities for local government purposes. The realm of New Zealand also includes Tokelau, a dependent territory, the Cook Islands and Niue, self-governing states in free association with New Zealand, and the Ross Dependency, which is New Zealand's territorial claim in Antarctica. Etymology Dutch explorer Abel Tasman sighted New Zealand in 1642 and named it Staten Land, in honor of the state's general, Dutch Parliament. He wrote, it is possible that this land joins to the Staten Land but it is uncertain, referring to a landmass of the same name at the southern tip of South America, discovered by Jacob Le Maire in 1616. In 1645, Dutch cartographers renamed the land Nova Zealandia after the Dutch province of Zealand. British explorer James Cook subsequently anglicized the name to New Zealand. Aotearoa, which means, land of the long white cloud, is the current Maori name for New Zealand. It is unknown whether Maori had a name for the whole country before the arrival of Europeans, with Aotearoa originally referring to just the North Island. Maori had several traditional names for the two main islands, including Te Aika a Maui, the Fish of Maui, for the North Island and Te Waipounamu, the Waters of Greenstone, or Te Waka o Aoraki, the Canoe of Aoraki, for the South Island. Early European maps labeled the islands North, North Island, Middle, South Island, and South, Stewart Island, Rikura. In 1830, mapmakers began to use North and South on their maps to distinguish the two largest islands and by 1907 this was the accepted norm. The New Zealand Geographic Board discovered in 2009 that the names of the North Island and South Island had never been formalized, and names and alternative names were formalized in 2013. This set the names as North Island or Te Aika Amaui, and South Island or Te Waipounamu. 
For each island, either its English or Maori name can be used, or both can be used together. History of New Zealand New Zealand was one of the last major landmasses settled by humans. Radiocarbon dating, evidence of deforestation and mitochondrial DNA variability within Maori populations suggest New Zealand was first settled by Eastern Polynesians between 1250 and 1300, concluding a long series of voyages through the Southern Pacific Islands. Over the centuries that followed, these settlers developed a distinct culture now known as Maori. The population was divided into IWI tribes and Hapu subtribes, who would sometimes cooperate, sometimes compete and sometimes fight against each other. At some point, a group of Maori migrated to Rikohu, now known as the Chatham Islands, where they developed their distinct Moriori culture. The Moriori population was all but wiped out between 1835 and 1862, largely because of Taranaki Maori invasion and enslavement in the 1830s, although European diseases also contributed. In 1862 only 101 survived, and the last known full-blooded Moriori died in 1933. Government and Politics in New Zealand New Zealand is a constitutional monarchy with a parliamentary democracy, although its constitution is not codified. Elizabeth II is the Queen of New Zealand and thus the head of state. The Queen is represented by the Governor-General, whom she appoints on the advice of the Prime Minister. The Governor-General can exercise the Crown's prerogative powers, such as reviewing cases of injustice and making appointments of ministers, ambassadors and other key public officials, and in rare situations, the reserve powers e.g. the power to dissolve Parliament or refuse the royal assent of a bill into law. The powers of the monarch and the Governor-General are limited by constitutional constraints and they cannot normally be exercised without the advice of ministers. The New Zealand Parliament holds legislative power and consists of the Queen and the House of Representatives. It also included an upper house, the Legislative Council, until this was abolished in 1950. The supremacy of Parliament over the Crown and other government institutions was established in England by the Bill of Rights 1689 and has been ratified as law in New Zealand. The House of Representatives is democratically elected and a government is formed from the party or coalition with the majority of seats. If no majority is formed, a minority government can be formed if support from other parties during confidence and supply votes is assured. The Governor-General appoints ministers under advice from the Prime Minister, who is by convention the parliamentary leader of the governing party or coalition. Cabinet, formed by ministers and led by the Prime Minister, is the highest policy-making body in government and responsible for deciding significant government actions. Members of Cabinet make major decisions collectively and are therefore collectively responsible for the consequences of these decisions. A parliamentary general election must be called no later than three years after the previous election. Almost all general elections between 1853 and 1993 were held under the first-past-the-post voting system. Since the 1996 election, a form of proportional representation called mixed-member proportional MMP has been used. Under the MMP system, each person has two votes, one is for a candidate standing in the voter's electorate and the other is for a party. Since the 2014 election, there have been 71 electorates, which include seven Maori electorates in which only Maori can optionally vote, and the remaining 49 of the 120 seats are assigned so that representation in Parliament reflects the party vote, with the threshold that a party must win at least one electorate or 5% of the total party vote before it is eligible for a seat. Elections since the 1930s have been dominated by two political parties, National and Labour. Between March 2005 and August 2006, New Zealand became the first country in the world in which all the highest offices in the land, head of state, the Governor-General, Prime Minister, Speaker and Chief Justice, were occupied simultaneously by women. The current Prime Minister is Jacinda Ardern, who has been in office since 26 October 2017. She is the country's third female Prime Minister. New Zealand's judiciary, headed by the Chief Justice, includes the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, the High Court, and subordinate courts. Judges and judicial officers are appointed non-politically and under strict rules regarding tenure to help maintain judicial independence. This theoretically allows the judiciary to interpret the law based solely on the legislation enacted by Parliament without other influences on their decisions. 
New Zealand is identified as one of the world's most stable and well-governed states. As at 2017, the country was ranked fourth in the strength of its democratic institutions, and first in government transparency and lack of corruption. A 2017 Human Rights Report by the U.S. Department of State noted that the government generally respected the rights of individuals, but voiced concerns regarding the social status of the Maori population. New Zealand ranks highly for civic participation in the political process, with 77% voter turnout during recent elections, compared to an OECD average of 69%. Foreign Relations and Military of New Zealand Early colonial New Zealand allowed the British government to determine external trade and be responsible for foreign policy. The 1923 and 1926 Imperial Conferences decided that New Zealand should be allowed to negotiate its own political treaties and the first commercial treaty was ratified in 1928 with Japan. On 3 September 1939 New Zealand allied itself with Britain and declared war on Germany with Prime Minister Michael Joseph Savage proclaiming, where she goes, we go, where she stands, we stand. In 1951 the United Kingdom became increasingly focused on its European interests, while New Zealand joined Australia and the United States in the ANZUS Security Treaty. The influence of the United States on New Zealand weakened following protests over the Vietnam War, the refusal of the United States to admonish France after the sinking of the Rainbow Warrior, disagreements over environmental and agricultural trade issues and New Zealand's nuclear-free policy. Despite the United States suspension of ANZUS obligations, the treaty remained in effect between New Zealand and Australia, whose foreign policy has followed a similar historical trend. Close political contact is maintained between the two countries, with free trade agreements and travel arrangements that allow citizens to visit, live and work in both countries without restrictions. In 2013 there were about 650,000 New Zealand citizens living in Australia, which is equivalent to 15% of the resident population of New Zealand. New Zealand has a strong presence among the Pacific Island countries. A large proportion of New Zealand's aid goes to these countries and many Pacific people migrate to New Zealand for employment. Permanent migration is regulated under the 1970 Samoan Quota Scheme and the 2002 Pacific Access Category, which allow up to 1,100 Samoan nationals and up to 750 other Pacific Islanders respectively to become permanent New Zealand residents each year. A seasonal workers scheme for temporary migration was introduced in 2007 and in 2009 about 8,000 Pacific Islanders were employed under it. A regional power, New Zealand is involved in the Pacific Islands Forum, the Pacific Community, Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Regional Forum, including the East Asia Summit. New Zealand is a member of the United Nations, the Commonwealth of Nations and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD, and participates in the five power defense arrangements. New Zealand's military services, the Defence Force, comprise the New Zealand Army, the Royal New Zealand Air Force and the Royal New Zealand Navy. New Zealand's national defence needs are modest, since a direct attack is unlikely. However, its military has had a global presence. The country fought in both world wars, with notable campaigns in Gallipoli, Crete, El Alamein and Casino. The Gallipoli campaign played an important part in fostering New Zealand's national identity and strengthened the Anzac tradition it shares with Australia. In addition to Vietnam and the two world wars, New Zealand fought in the Second Boer War, the Korean War, the Malayan Emergency, the Gulf War and the Afghanistan War. It has contributed forces to several regional and global peacekeeping missions, such as those in Cyprus, Somalia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Sinai, Angola, Cambodia, the Iran-Iraq border, Bougainville, East Timor, and the Solomon Islands. Climate in New Zealand New Zealand's climate is predominantly temperate maritime Copen, CFB, with mean annual temperatures ranging from 10 degrees Celsius 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the south to 16 degrees Celsius 61 degrees Fahrenheit in the north. Historical maxima and minima are 42.4 degrees Celsius 108.32 degrees Fahrenheit in Rangiora, Canterbury and minus 25.6 degrees Celsius minus 14.08 degrees Fahrenheit in Ranfurly, Otago. 
Conditions vary sharply across regions from extremely wet on the west coast of the South Island to almost semi-arid in central Otago and the Mackenzie Basin of inland Canterbury and subtropical in Northland. Of the seven largest cities, Christchurch is the driest, receiving on average only 640 mm of rain per year and Wellington the wettest, receiving almost twice that amount. Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch all receive a yearly average of more than 2,000 hours of sunshine. The southern and southwestern parts of the South Island have a cooler and cloudier climate, with around 1,400 to 1,600 hours. The northern and northeastern parts of the South Island are the sunniest areas of the country and receive about 2,400 to 2,500 hours. The general snow season is early June until early October, though cold snaps can occur outside this season. Snowfall is common in the eastern and southern parts of the South Island and mountain areas across the country. The table below lists climate normals for the warmest and coldest months in New Zealand's six largest cities. North Island cities are generally warmest in February. South Island cities are warmest in January. Biodiversity in New Zealand. New Zealand's geographic isolation for 80 million years in island biogeography has influenced evolution of the country's species of animals, fungi and plants. Physical isolation has caused biological isolation, resulting in a dynamic evolutionary ecology with examples of very distinctive plants and animals as well as populations of widespread species. About 82% of New Zealand's indigenous vascular plants are endemic, covering 1,944 species across 65 genera. The number of fungi recorded from New Zealand, including lichen-forming species, is not known, nor is the proportion of those fungi which are endemic, but one estimate suggests there are about 2,300 species of lichen-forming fungi in New Zealand and 40% of these are endemic. The two main types of forest are those dominated by broadleaf trees with emergent podocarps, or by southern beech in cooler climates. The remaining vegetation types consist of grasslands, the majority of which are tussock. Before the arrival of humans, an estimated 80% of the land was covered in forest, with only high alpine, wet, infertile and volcanic areas without trees. Massive deforestation occurred after humans arrived, with around half the forest cover lost to fire after Polynesian settlement. Much of the remaining forest fell after European settlement, being logged or cleared to make room for pastoral farming, leaving forest occupying only 23% of the land. The forests were dominated by birds, and the lack of mammalian predators led to some like the kiwi, kakapo, weka and takahe evolving flightlessness. The arrival of humans, associated changes to habitat, and the introduction of rats, ferrets and other mammals led to the extinction of many bird species, including large birds like the moa and host seagull. Other indigenous animals are represented by reptiles, tuatara, skinks and geckos, frogs, spiders, insects, weta, and snails. Some, such as the tuatara, are so unique that they have been called living fossils. Three species of bats, one since extinct, were the only sign of native land mammals in New Zealand until the 2006 discovery of bones from a unique, mouse-sized land mammal at least 16 million years old. Marine mammals however are abundant, with almost half the world's cetaceans, whales, dolphins, and porpoises, and large numbers of fur seals reported in New Zealand waters. Many seabirds breed in New Zealand, a third of them unique to the country. More penguin species are found in New Zealand than in any other country. Since human arrival, almost half of the country's vertebrate species have become extinct, including at least 51 birds, 3 frogs, 3 lizards, 1 freshwater fish, and 1 bat. Others are endangered or have had their range severely reduced. However, New Zealand conservationists have pioneered several methods to help threatened wildlife recover, including island sanctuaries, pest control, wildlife translocation, fostering, and ecological restoration of islands and other selected areas. Economy in New Zealand New Zealand has an advanced market economy, ranked 16th in the 2018 Human Development Index and 3rd in the 2018 Index of Economic Freedom. It is a high-income economy with a nominal gross domestic product GDP, per capita of US$36,254. 
The currency is the New Zealand dollar, informally known as the Kiwi dollar, it also circulates in the Cook Islands see Cook Islands dollar, Niue, Tokelau, and the Pitcairn Islands. Historically, extractive industries have contributed strongly to New Zealand's economy, focusing at different times on sealing, whaling, flax, gold, cowrie gum, and native timber. The first shipment of refrigerated meat on the Dunedin in 1882 led to the establishment of meat and dairy exports to Britain, a trade which provided the basis for strong economic growth in New Zealand. High demand for agricultural products from the United Kingdom and the United States helped New Zealanders achieve higher living standards than both Australia and Western Europe in the 1950s and 1960s. In 1973, New Zealand's export market was reduced when the United Kingdom joined the European Economic Community and other compounding factors, such as the 1973 oil and 1979 energy crises, led to a severe economic depression. Living standards in New Zealand fell behind those of Australia and Western Europe, and by 1982 New Zealand had the lowest per capita income of all the developed nations surveyed by the World Bank. In the mid-1980s New Zealand deregulated its agricultural sector by phasing out subsidies over a three-year period. Since 1984, successive governments engaged in major macroeconomic restructuring, known first as Rajernomics and then Ruthanasia, rapidly transforming New Zealand from a protected and highly regulated economy to a liberalized free trade economy. Unemployment peaked above 10% in 1991 and 1992, following the 1987 share market crash, but eventually fell to a record low since 1986 of 3.7% in 2007, ranking third from 27 comparable OECD nations. However, the global financial crisis that followed had a major impact on New Zealand, with the GDP shrinking for five consecutive quarters, the longest recession in over 30 years, and unemployment rising back to 7% in late 2009. Unemployment rates for different age groups follow similar trends, but are consistently higher among youth. In the December 2014 quarter, the general unemployment rate was around 5.8%, while the unemployment rate for youth aged 15 to 21 was 15.6%. New Zealand has experienced a series of brain drains since the 1970s that still continue today. Nearly one quarter of highly skilled workers live overseas, mostly in Australia and Britain, which is the largest proportion from any developed nation. In recent decades, however, a brain gain has brought in educated professionals from Europe and less developed countries. Today New Zealand's economy benefits from a high level of innovation. Infrastructure in New Zealand. In 2015, renewable energy, primarily geothermal and hydroelectric power, generated 40.1% of New Zealand's gross energy supply. Geothermal power alone accounted for 22% of New Zealand's energy in 2015. The provision of water supply and sanitation is generally of good quality. Regional authorities provide water abstraction, treatment and distribution infrastructure to most developed areas. New Zealand's transport network comprises 94,000 kilometers, 58,410 miles of roads, including 199 kilometers, 124 miles of motorways and 4,128 kilometers, 2,565 miles of railway lines. Most major cities and towns are linked by bus services, although the private car is the predominant mode of transport. The railways were privatized in 1993, but were re-nationalized by the government in stages between 2004 and 2008. The state-owned enterprise Kiwi Rail now operates the railways, with the exception of commuter services in Auckland and Wellington which are operated by Transdev and Metlink, respectively. Railways run the length of the country, although most lines now carry freight rather than passengers. Most international visitors arrive via air and New Zealand has six international airports, but currently only the Auckland and Christchurch airports connect directly with countries other than Australia or Fiji. The New Zealand Post Office had a monopoly over telecommunications in New Zealand until 1987 when Telecom New Zealand was formed, initially as a state-owned enterprise and then privatised in 1990. Chorus, which was split from Telecom now Spark, in 2011, still owns the majority of the telecommunications infrastructure, but competition from other providers has increased. 
A large-scale rollout of gigabit-capable fiber to the premises, branded as ultra-fast broadband, began in 2009 with a target of being available to 87% of the population by 2022. As of 2017, the United Nations International Telecommunication Union ranks New Zealand 13th in the development of information and communications infrastructure. Languages in New Zealand English is the predominant language in New Zealand, spoken by 96.1% of the population. New Zealand English is similar to Australian English and many speakers from the Northern Hemisphere are unable to tell the accents apart. The most prominent differences between the New Zealand English dialect and other English dialects are the shifts in the short front vowels, the short I sound, as in kit, has centralized towards the schwa sound, the a uh, in comma, and about, the short e sound, as in dress, has moved towards the short I sound, and the short a uh, sound, as in trap, has moved to the short e sound. After the Second World War, Maori were discouraged from speaking their own language te reo Maori, in schools and workplaces and it existed as a community language only in a few remote areas. It has recently undergone a process of revitalization, being declared one of New Zealand's official languages in 1987, and is spoken by 3.7% of the population. There are now Maori language immersion schools and two television channels that broadcast predominantly in Maori. Many places have both their Maori and English names officially recognized. As recorded in the 2013 census, Samoan is the most widely spoken non-official language 2.2%, followed by Hindi 1.7%, Northern Chinese including Mandarin 1.3%, and French 1.2%. 20,235 people reported the ability to use New Zealand Sign Language. It was declared one of New Zealand's official languages in 2006. Religion in New Zealand Christianity is the predominant religion in New Zealand, although its society is among the most secular in the world. In the 2013 census, 55.0% of the population identified with one or more religions, including 49.0% identifying as Christians. Another 41.9% indicated that they had no religion. The main Christian denominations are, by number of adherents, Roman Catholicism 12.6%, Anglicanism 11.8%, Presbyterianism 8.5%, and Christian not further defined, i.e. people identifying as Christian but not stating the denomination, 5.5%. The Maori-based Ringatu and Ratana religions, 1.4%, are also Christian in origin. Immigration and demographic change in recent decades have contributed to the growth of minority religions, such as Hinduism 2.1%, Buddhism 1.5%, Islam 1.2%, and Sikhism 0.5%. The Auckland region exhibited the greatest religious diversity. Education in New Zealand. Primary and secondary schooling is compulsory for children aged 6 to 16, with the majority attending from the age of 5. There are 13 school years and attending state public schools is free to New Zealand citizens and permanent residents from a person's fifth birthday to the end of the calendar year following their 19th birthday. New Zealand has an adult literacy rate of 99%, and over half of the population, aged 15 to 29 hold a tertiary qualification. There are five types of government-owned tertiary institutions, universities, colleges of education, polytechnics, specialist colleges, and Wananga, in addition to private training establishments. In the adult population, 14.2% have a bachelor's degree or higher, 30.4% have some form of secondary qualification as their highest qualification and 22.4% have no formal qualification. The OECD's Program for International Student Assessment ranks New Zealand's education system as the seventh best in the world, with students performing exceptionally well in reading, mathematics and science. Culture in New Zealand Early Maori adapted the tropically-based East Polynesian culture in line with the challenges associated with a larger and more diverse environment, eventually developing their own distinctive culture. Social organization was largely communal with families Fano, sub-tribes and tribes IWI, ruled by a chief Rangatira, whose position was subject to the community's approval. 
The British and Irish immigrants brought aspects of their own culture to New Zealand and also influenced Maori culture, particularly with the introduction of Christianity. However, Maori still regard their allegiance to tribal groups as a vital part of their identity, and Maori kinship roles resemble those of other Polynesian peoples. More recently American, Australian, Asian and other European cultures have exerted influence on New Zealand. Non-Maori Polynesian cultures are also apparent, with Pacifica, the world's largest Polynesian festival, now an annual event in Auckland. The largely rural life in early New Zealand led to the image of New Zealanders being rugged, industrious problem solvers. Modesty was expected and enforced through the tall poppy syndrome, where high achievers received harsh criticism. At the time New Zealand was not known as an intellectual country. From the early 20th century until the late 1960s, Maori culture was suppressed by the attempted assimilation of Maori into British New Zealanders. In the 1960s, as tertiary education became more available and cities expanded urban culture began to dominate. However, rural imagery and themes are common in New Zealand's art, literature and media. New Zealand's national symbols are influenced by natural, historical, and Maori sources. The silver fern is an emblem appearing on army insignia and sporting team uniforms. Certain items of popular culture thought to be unique to New Zealand are called kiwiana. Art in New Zealand. As part of the resurgence of Maori culture, the traditional crafts of carving and weaving are now more widely practiced and Maori artists are increasing in number and influence. Most Maori carvings feature human figures, generally with three fingers and either a natural-looking, detailed head or a grotesque head. Surface patterns consisting of spirals, ridges, notches and fish scales decorate most carvings. The preeminent Maori architecture consisted of carved meeting houses, farinui, decorated with symbolic carvings and illustrations. These buildings were originally designed to be constantly rebuilt, changing and adapting to different whims or needs. Maori decorated the white wood of buildings, canoes and cenotaphs using red, a mixture of red ochre and shark fat, and black, made from soot, paint and painted pictures of birds, reptiles and other designs on cave walls. Maori tattoos, moko, consisting of colored soot mixed with gum were cut into the flesh with a bone chisel. Since European arrival paintings and photographs have been dominated by landscapes, originally not as works of art but as factual portrayals of New Zealand. Portraits of Maori were also common, with early painters often portraying them as noble savages, exotic beauties or friendly natives. The country's isolation delayed the influence of European artistic trends allowing local artists to develop their own distinctive style of regionalism. During the 1960s and 1970s, many artists combined traditional Maori and Western techniques, creating unique art forms. New Zealand art and craft have gradually achieved an international audience, with exhibitions in the Venice Biennale in 2001 and the Paradise Now exhibition in New York in 2004. Sports in New Zealand Most of the major sporting codes played in New Zealand have British origins. Rugby union is considered the national sport and attracts the most spectators. Golf, netball, tennis and cricket have the highest rates of adult participation, while netball, rugby union and football soccer, are particularly popular among young people. Around 54% of New Zealand adolescents participate in sports for their school. Victorious rugby tours to Australia and the United Kingdom in the late 1880s and the early 1900s played an early role in instilling a national identity. Horse racing was also a popular spectator sport and became part of the rugby, racing and beer culture during the 1960s. Maori participation in European sports was particularly evident in rugby and the country's team performs a haka, a traditional Maori challenge, before international matches. New Zealand is known for its extreme sports, adventure tourism and strong mountaineering tradition, as seen in the success of notable New Zealander Sir Edmund Hillary. Other outdoor pursuits such as cycling, fishing, swimming, running, tramping, canoeing, hunting, snow sports, surfing and sailing are also popular. The Polynesian sport of waka-ama racing has experienced a resurgence of interest in New Zealand since the 1980s. New Zealand has competitive international teams in rugby union, rugby league, netball, cricket, softball, and sailing. 
New Zealand participated at the Summer Olympics in 1908 and 1912 as a joint team with Australia, before first participating on its own in 1920. The country has ranked highly on a medals to population ratio at recent games. The All Blacks, the national rugby union team, are the most successful in the history of international rugby and have won the World Cup three times. Thanks for watching this video if you like this video, click on like button. If you want to watch more videos like this, click on the subscription button below, it's free subscription.